how y'all doing? What's going on? So, yeah, Steve Nash had to be fired. I mean, I'm looking at the situation like that was a no-brainer with the uh, Brooklyn Nets. I mean, uh, <clears throat> straight up. I mean, who are you kidding? You know, you he was not going to be able to coach Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. They both basically said, we don't need a coach. They said that from the word jump. Steve Nash was what I call a really good player who had a, a, some great time in Phoenix and he won two league MVPs, but I was never big on Steve Nash like that. But as a player, I give him his due. Phoenix, they could, they had a moment where they look, you know, refreshing with their style of play of basketball. But he was one of those guys that I never looked at him as near the top of the point guard food chain. And as a matter of fact, yeah, his numbers and his, his uh, statistics were, were straight. However, you know, when someone like Steph Curry came along, I just really didn't even think about Steve Curry. I mean, uh, not, yeah, uh, I, I mean Steve Curry, but uh, J- um, Steve Nash like that. Because Nash was never better than Jason Kidd, Gary Payton, or John Stockton during that time. He had that run in Phoenix, but I just was never buying into him. But I will say as a player, he was really good to very good. I'll give you that. He made the Hall of Fame. But he's one of those guys I kind of like, you know, he just had a late surgery. What can I do with the Mike D'Antoni system, which was at that time was pretty revolutionary. Seven seconds getting the ball in and out. But Golden State took it to a whole other level. But anyway, he just wasn't cut out to be a head coach. I think people look at copycat. They saw Steve Kerr, what Steve Kerr accomplished. But you got to remember, Steve Kerr puts in details. He knows how to coach. You got to know how to coach ego. You know, people used to always say, oh, Phil Jackson had it easy. But guess what? He knew how to coach ego. You got to know how to massage ego. Everybody can't be like Greg Popovich or Pat Riley, but you got to know how to deal with ego. And Steve Nash had no chance. You know, he looked like a choir boy. looked like he was lost. They ran over him. They clowned him. They laughed at him. He was too soft for the gig. Uma Yudoka is the best choice. And that whole mess in Boston, which is a joke, because if you're going to suspend or you're going to fire, you got to make up your mind. Can't hold a guy hostage. And that was all that happens on all professional levels. Who are we kidding? But he comes to the Nets. I think they'll give him the last hope for credibility because if Yudoka can't come and work with Durant and Kyrie, they're done. And I'm a firm believer that Kyrie and Durant, Kawhi, they can still play. We're just better suited with what I call uh, better teammates at Casa could keep them covered. And that's what you're seeing. They're not leaders like that, but they can ball. But they're not cut to be the be the alphas. And it shows. The difference between being alpha and being a talent. And it shows. Please hit like, subscribe, welcome thoughts and comments. And I do respond. Thank you. Wash your hands. Keep your mind clear. Watch out for one another. And please share the video if you want to. And the Nets have been a good soap opera. They are reality TV. Not for reasons for basketball. But this was on Steve Nash. He had no business being a coach. He was in over his head, but he had the right complexion for the protection, for the conditions. And now the Nets had to go back to punch back. But if they can get Yudoka, that would be their last saving grace. I'm out.